Hey everybody, Asher here, back with some more Hearthstone where Tavern Brawl is upon us. And today we're going to be playing on my free-to-play EU account, and interestingly enough, we're going to be playing Paladin today. Because it's the underdog, and we all know Paladin's in a tough spot right now in Hearthstone. At least on my free-to-play account where I've been dusting pretty much every single Paladin card that has come my way so far. So we have a very basic deck, with the exception of Murloc Knights, and then we have a few of my strong cards that I have in here, like Dr. Boom, Sunwalker, things like that. But this is a very just kind of let's hope it can work mid-range deck. I have no idea how it's going to do. But one of the things that I've really liked about this challenge, playing it on the North America side so far, is that it really makes people play very differently, which is something you always want to see from a brawl if you can. Because if you're losing by four health or more, a random two or three cost minion comes to your side, and that kind of board presence can really help, which is one reason I'm playing a Mookless Champion, because I'm expecting to be losing. But we'll see if we can overwhelm the board at the end. I have no idea how this is going to go. I did play Oil Rogue on uh, the North America side, and I thought the burst worked out really well. But here, well, we'll see. Let's brawl. Now, like I said, people tend to be playing very slow in this challenge. So I'm going to ditch Lothab, Murloc Knight, Consecration. We'll see if we can get Consecration might be a bad ditch, but there's kind of two ways to play. It's either extremely slow and never bring your minion out. Yeah, I'm playing Guardian of Kings. That's right, I'm playing Guardian of Kings, which is actually a little counterproductive for this challenge, but part of me just wants to not all die, right. plus it's a big body and all that many late game plays, unless I want to throw in a in shine or something in there. Let's see here, nothing worth playing yet. Could hear a power save the coin for something fantastical later on. But I have been seeing a lot of slow decks like Freeze Maker or something. I haven't seen too many people do what I did with the uh, Oil Rug, which is just uh, punish people for playing slow by going very, very fast. So in other words, working to some kind of big burst turn of some sort, as I'm sure you can hear. Doggy in the background, that is a really, really loud drinking for a tiny, tiny dog. Alright, so, well... That's exciting. I'm glad you didn't get a charge. All right. How do we contest this? We got our consecrate anyway. If I if I do this this turn and put out the piloted shredder, does that really help me very much? I think I can put out the harvest golem. He's either gonna clear or not clear. I mean, if he if he goes face. It could it could work out for him pretty well. This okay, so is Shredder, and probably going to go face, so I get an additional minion. Now one of the catches is that these minions cannot attack this turn, but this is a pretty fortunate get here. Hmm. Now I can potentially hero power. I could potentially silence this. This doesn't seem like an awful consecrate turn. Because he could go face again here in just a minute. It's probably better. I mean, there. It's a. It's a. The, my question is, since you're this, are you going to be better off? Do I serve myself very well by trying to get an additional health? I don't think so. I wonder. We'll just play on curve. Let's see, so that might be a terrible play. But if he wants to go face and knock me down further, I have two Guardians of Kings. Now, there's something that people will not see coming. I actually have a decent curve this match, which is nice. And he's not going to coin Blizzard into anything here. Something needs tinkering. Well, that's fun. So I do have one ornery dog in the back that's suddenly like, oh, you're recording. So I guess I should just watch and wait. Now, he probably does have a flame strike of some sort. Is he going to blast this out of the sky is what I want to know. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. That could be my undoing. Now, if I silence this, it will go back to the uh, default from before. But right now we have... Let's see here. I can kill you. I can silence and kill you. I wonder. This might be a better consecrate turn. Because I have coin. Let's 
So let's see here. Let me he was just going to go face. It's a little risky to do it this way, but we're going to do it anyway. That's decent. And we shall go ahead and... Play right into the blizzard, right guys? Said I got some taunts that I can put up and I got some heals. Just didn't seem like the right time to consecrate, but I do have a uh, board that's very susceptible to board clears. Engaging TC oh, that's fine. Oh, good. Engaging TC Not very surprised by that. I was kind of wondering if that's how I should do this matchup here. But the nice thing is that because he played both Did of those, that makes my consecration piece? stronger. Unfortunately, cannot do both at the same time. Is there any reason to not consecrate here? I mean, I can. I'm gonna have to trade out a lot of shit if I do, is the problem. But I can see what he was going mm. for at that play. So do this. The Reversing switch, doing pretty good. So that's both mind control techs, which he didn't get a lot of value out of. A good thing I didn't play any of my big creatures. But it's nice that he had both of those in his hand that early. Now the question is, does he have like lethal in hand? I guess that means we're playing Guardian of Kings next turn. Echo of Meta, really? Okay. That's fun. That's a lot of fun. Oh, that's cute. Alright, well, Echo is not a card that I expected, but we can actually board clear here pretty well. Um, eight mana. He didn't cost reduce anything, so I can probably get away with this. It's a good draw. Let's see. The battle! So he played the one that he echoed. Reporting for right. Let's start the comeback. Maybe I should have waited for the zombie chat a little bit, but little weenie board presence to save the day. Plus, I can kill one of his big things. So, okay, looks like he has double fireball. Cool. Alright, so I can kill this, thank goodness. Ha! Friends be healed. Nobody expects the Guardian of Kings basic budget deck. And now he's losing. See, counterproductive. But I can push for lethal next turn. Un well, I mean, unless there's some bad RNG. Yeah, there we go. That's 5, 10, 13, exactly. Well played. Let's see here. Give your, uh, give your weapon plus one attack. Thank you. Reporting for duty. For justice. 5, 10, 13. Alright, Orgrimmar Spirit, you worked. So, budget Paladin on the first try. Didn't even need those uh, overpowered Murloc Knights. And look at all those Paladin quests I have. That's why I'm that's why I'm playing Paladin. It's like, well, I need gold and I need to knock out quests. And there's a bug on the mobile client that uh, doesn't let you switch between regions, so I haven't had a chance to play except for Hearthstone Mobile this week. Let's see what the pack has. I'm due for a legendary on my uh, account from a pack, but not this time. Arcanized Soul Priest is actually good for my priest deck. These are actually cards I can use, except that I have... Uh, this is my second Cruel Taskmaster. I have two Unleashes. And Stranglehold and Tiger is still a solid card. Let's do another Brawl. Okie dokie, hit the Start key before I uh, actually... 
let my dog in. So that shows where my priorities are. We're ditching everything. We want a better early curve. Not awesome. But it's druid, so what could possibly go wrong other than everything? Well met. The, uh... Unfortunately, the curve of a lot of paladin decks, especially ones that are relying on basic cards, is that you have a very crowded four spot. Especially since I'm running Hammer of Wrath and Blessing of Kings and True Silver Champion and Murloc Knight. So... We know it is a token deck of some sort. It's funny how Power of the Wild... Uh, some token decks work, and then it's kind of slingshot back towards mid-range. Ooh, this would have been nice to keep the uh, owl, apparently. And Moonfire. So is this just as basic of a deck as I'm running, or is there something fishy? Oh, that's a really good target next turn. Alright, let's play you. Let's contest the board. We're going to see if he goes face, because you have... most of the time they're going combos. Once again, I know you're getting the call of the wild that I let somebody in and they just want to drink all the time. It's not that hot. Okay. Wow. That is very exciting. Oh, that is a beautiful top deck. I don't know if we're really going to take advantage of here. I can do 8 damage and not get killed. So that's a lot of cards and that's going to win early game card. And he has to choose what he wants to swipe, assuming he's even holding the swipe in hand. So I guess yesterday people were playing very cautious, at least on North America. Maybe people have figured out you maybe want to pressure early here. So what's your turn six? Ooh, Dark Whispers. That is very exciting because I have a Consecration in hand. I am sorry. I mean, just automatic right there. That's like the anti-savage mode. Well, Dark Whispers, fun card. I just had the answer. Let's brawl again. Oh, quest money. That's good. Now, that is the kind of curve I'm talking about. And I could actually go pretty greedy uh, playing Blessing of Wisdom as well. I think I will. I think I will, actually. Because I should have a target for it, and it could force out some early removal before I get the Pilot Shredder out. So I think the play is Coin Haunted well Creeper. Met. And then see what sticks. I because, of course, you may have noticed one card I do not have. And my deck is Shielded Minibot, because I do not actually have it on my free-to-play account. Because I have, I have only played enough Paladin to get the gold reward. That's it. I think it's like unlock all the basic cards. Oh, that that is a. Uh... Oh, what do we do here? I guess we just chow. We can go for one card draw. Try and force it out. Keep the chow up. One card draw is better than no card draw. Sometimes you put it on the opponent's creatures to try and get them to do something. Lotheb is a good draw here. I don't have much of a turn three play right now, though. Which is a little sad, but... Coining inefficiently will do that, but... Does he trade into this, or can he clear my board is the question now. And that's... Uh, a lot of people are saying pa uh, Warlock is what you want to play in this challenge because you can just tap your way into it. So I'm going to play this. Oh, interesting. I could play this pretty efficiently right here. Unfortunately, I don't have a good play other than here power. So I will keep the chow up. As tempting as it is to make the inefficient play of trading this in here. Oh, with charge. That's that's fun. Now, I wonder, is this guy going to be clearing me? Is it a hand lock? If it's a hand lock, I'm really in trouble here. I mean, what has he played so far? He's played an acidic swamp ooze, which some hand locks. We'll tech in. So he's just going to go for the self here. Okay. That's pretty good for him. Now I could hold off on the attack, but I have a feeling that with True Silver in hand, I should keep under pressure. We'll see if Lothab isn't a thing. I do have a 5, 6, 7 if it comes to that. 
Oh. And the patented two roll. That stinks. That also stinks. All right. I think I'm going to say, uh, well, Bocking here isn't bad. True Silver here is pretty bad. I mean, it could be that or it could be Trade Lotheb. Mm. This may not be a key Lotheb turn, though. Let's do this. The battle. No one needs to know this engineer. So he'll be able to tap down. It's more than three, which is not my favorite wording here. It's, so it's four health or more. That's why I didn't go face with anybody. Although Hammer of Wrath you can use on face. I know it's the famous Dennis play, but a lot of people don't remember that uh, you can so do face damage with that. I actually like my hand a lot. I hope I can play it out pretty well. I don't have a great read on this deck, other than uh, it could just be some funsies variety of uh, Warlock here. Oh good, we're actually drawing out the removal. Wow, both Dark Bombs. That makes the Blessing of Kings worth it. That is literally one card. Alright. Guess we just play on curve. Oh, it's got to be painful for him, but he does get a Spider Tank, which doesn't immediately contest this, but I can True Silver or Dr. Boom, depending on what is good next turn. Let's get my four spots of very card. Ah, oh, Handlock. Would love a Silence right about now. Probably better to True Silver Hero Power. Dr. Boom's fun, but I can go face and force a trade from him. I mean, this is the time of the game where for justice. pretty much you gotta start pressing. And since it probably is Handlock. What? King Mukla, you weren't supposed to come in here. That's not very nice of you. All right. Well played. I mean, it's a, sometimes you get a novice engineer for two mana, and sometimes you get a King Mukla for three. I have the cards to answer it at least. Now that's more exciting. Thank you. Worst possible drop here. All right, what is the play? That's not the play I want to see. This is probably a done game. All right. Consecration is pretty good. Hmm. So let's think about this for a second. If I attack into here, Consecrate, I can clear everything except for his uh, giant. Obviously, the giant is the biggest threat. But... Let's go ahead and see what we get. Let's consecrate first. I want to think through this for a second. I can do five damage to myself. Or, uh... Avoid damage. I'm, the giant's gonna be up anyway, so. For justice. Solve a hand recruit. Okay. Leave you up. But does he have any pirates in that deck? Yeah, Handlock is really good for this matchup because Handlock, you're usually losing to your opponent anyway until some big plays later on. Also, some things to note is that the Warrior Hero power counts as health, so armor count. You can armor up twice and immediately sell things for like this. Oh, good. That's pretty much it. So, I mean, you're, you're going to lose occasionally, but he doesn't know just how basic this deck is. Um, What do we do? Guess we 
For justice. Shit. Yeah, chat lethal. Job done. Emperor Thorissian doesn't really save me. So this is gonna go face, and he doesn't have any dark bombs. Surely he has like a arcane golem or something to finish this off. You face there we go. Where is my uh, sacrificial path when I need it? All right. Oh no, they're covering their faces, but you shouldn't. It's fun. Hand locks happen. I mean, I didn't get enough of a board presence. Let's do one more. Like I said, it's it's literally a deck of desperation throw together. Maybe there's some stuff earlier plays that I could have done that would have been better, but hand locks just rough. I will actually keep true silver here. Yeah, there's a lot of paladin card they don't have. Pretty much if it's a if it's a non-basic card for Paladin, unless it's Murloc Knight, because I've got enough uh, Grand Tournament packs, I don't have it. So there's the Blessing well of Wisdom again anyway. I only have one of those. Greetings, friend. Alright, good top deck skills. Let's see if we can top deck some more in a minute. Is it Totem Shaman or is it Midrange Shami? I find it very interesting that the uh, power ranks from uh, Liquid Hearth actually didn't have Totem Shaman listed as a deck. I'm saying Shaman instead of Shaman. Alright. That's annoying ish. Well. Let's go for the card draw anyway, because it forces the issue a little bit. I mean, some people would say put the card draw on that thing. And maybe that's the better route here, but... I do have a Consecrate answer if he elects to flood the board with even more things. I don't even need to Consecrate yet. It would just be a one-for-one. One. The Murloc Knight's not really a turn four play. No, this is a little more of a Consecration turn now. And he's going to give me a creature. And a card draw, or is he going to Earth Shock? Oh, Totemic Might. We must cleanse the Sunwell. Well, that changes things ever so slightly. I guess the first answer is we uh, obviously want to buff this. And we get Hammer of Wrath! And Totemic Might is a permanent buff, so. Free creatures are fun. So this is a lot of blessings for these. This little creeper. And now that's a, that's a hex. He just used a hex on a two mana card. Now keep in mind, obviously, there's uh, other considerations. But when that's eating up the hex, that is a good sign. Any reason to do anything other than true silver here? I could actually Hammer of Wrath for another card draw. Yeah, let's do that. Alright. So we're going to try and play around Lightning Storm by not putting too much crap on the board here. Murloc Knight or Piloted Shredder could be good. Silverhand Regent may have been good this past turn, but I don't really want to lose my board. And this is why we saved True Silver Champions. Bear! Alright. Second True Silver. Let's act like we top decked it. Oh, True Silver! Cool! Six damage to the face. Alright. Go, little guys. Let's put appropriate pressure on here. And see if he's playing double mind control tech. Engaging TC no, just single mind control tech. That's annoying, but I mean it's not surprising. It's it's a good card in this brawl. Uh, oh wow, that's actually a really good get. 
Let's go ahead and uh, Dr. Boom. So why not? And then we gotta, we gotta bust this anyway. So we still get our potential draw next turn unless he uh, has healing wave, which he could. But this is gonna be nice if I can keep it up. And it's, it got put in there. Oh, that's. If he doesn't hex this, it's a fair trade. If he does hex it, all right. Let's see what gets hit. Bonus card. Drink with me, friend. All right. Well, I can't play a minion right now. So let's trade in some boom bots. That's good. It's not exactly what I wanted. Who's the best to play out of all of these? I know that night. Reporting for duty. War leader. Can't complain about that. Fairy dragon, which doesn't have charge. Did you bring some fish? So does, he should have put that over on the other side in case that was a flame tongue, but. I'm pretty far ahead. He's got to hope for a taunt totem, even then that might not save him. Spell power with two mana. It's too bad. Even basic paladin with just a few additional spice cards like Dr. Boom and stuff beats Shaman. And he didn't have a bad draw either. I was just ahead. So that's that's it. That's underdog rules. You want to try and let your health get down a little bit. And I, I saw a lot of people today getting cute with mind control tech, but... The risk with mind control tech is always that you don't get a lot of value for uh, what you pull. And especially when it's going to get generated every turn by the rules. But still, I think this is a very interesting challenge. Definitely my favorite brawl I've had in a while. It's too bad we didn't get a Mookless play. But the games were kind of over too fast. But here's the deck one more time. Lots of questionable cards. I did craft Dr. Boom with dust that I had saved, saved, saved. Guardian of Kings actually saved me against a mage. So that's a plus. Emperor Thorissian. I said some some uh, legendaries that are from fairly easily easy to acquire, uh, what should calls it, uh, adventures. But otherwise, pretty budget as far as the decks go. You don't even need Doctor Boom, even though it was helpful in that last game. But hey, that's it for now. This is Asher. Thanks for watching. Play the brawl, get the packs, do better than I did with the forty dust. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time with more videos. It's not just Hearthstone. There's lots of other things coming around, and stay tuned for a new series that I'll be starting soon for a game that you may or may not realize that I'm starting to pay a lot of attention to. Ooh, exciting. See you next time.